All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Word with Ty Brownlow. I am your host, Ty Brownlow. And remember, no one is worthless. No story is worthless. Today, ladies and gentlemen, do I have a guest for you. Please put your hands together for Miss Denise Butler. Thank you. <laughs> How are you? I, I am good. I'm good. How are you? I am great. I am great. Um, once again, welcome to my platform. Welcome to World with Ty Brownlow. And um, today we are here talking with the CEO and founder of Coco Cuties, Ms. Denise Butler, of course, as I said before. <laughs> and we're here to talk uh, about that and about how representation matters. So let's just let's get started, shall we? Okay. Um, well, uh, as I said, I'm Denise, um, and I am actually the CEO, the founder, and the artist behind Coco Cutie. Yeah. So, like, this is a brand I actually started, um, created from scratch. Um, I'm a self-taught children's artist. So, um, yeah, so all my designs are original, one of a kind. Um, but I started the brand... Oh gosh, about 2013, 14. But that's kind of when I had the vision. But you know, you kind of, because it was my art and I was self taught, I was a little self conscious. So I really, really got the brand going probably around 2017. But I really, I, I actually, the vision came in 2013, 14. And um, <laughs> people always ask me, I'm like, it started because of a tutu. And I, I know it sounds weird. Okay, really? so. I am actually, I actually went to college and I have a bachelor of science in chemistry. So I did that for like 10 years, 10, mm -hmm. 15 years. I did chemistry, but I always, even when I was in college, I was spent half my time in art department. So I was always, you know, like doing all that little stuff, but I never really got into doing this type of stuff until 2012, 13. My niece, she's 12 now. She was four at the time and it was her birthday. My nieces are like a year, a year and a week apart. Um, but they're my inspiration for the brand because I actually don't have children. I actually created this for my nieces. I call myself the extra auntie. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyways, I asked my niece, it was around April. I asked my niece. Um, I was like, okay, what do you want for your birthday? She was like four years old, three to four or something like that. And she's like, Hey, um, I actually want a tutu. Well, now you can find them everywhere. But at the time when she was little, it was very hard to find that. So I had to actually make her first tutu. Mm -hmm. And then uh, me being extra auntie, I wanted to create, find a shirt with a little black ballerina dancer on it. And I'll be honest with you, at the, what was that, 2011, 12? Mm -hmm. Do you know how hard it was to find a shirt with a ballerina? I, I could not can't. find one. Like, I couldn't find one. Of it. I was like, okay, what is this? So I ended up, I was like, well, I always draw and do and stuff. So let me just see if I can draw them one. So I actually created, I actually used fabric paint and, and, and tool to create their first shirts. Hmm. So, uh, cause again, they're, they're only a week apart, a year and a week apart. So it's literally April 14th, April 21st, with two different sisters. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know if they planned this or what. I don't, <laughs> don't ask. So anyways, I made their first shirts. And because it took me so long to find this, I was like, okay, seriously. And then I had a good reaction from the shirt. So I was like, okay, well, maybe I did a little something here. Okay. So, so I, I was like, and then it just kept going. Coco Cutie kept going through my head. And I was like, okay, I can't be the only one looking for this stuff. And so that's when I literally learned how to do digital art to figure out how to put my products, my images on products. So like I did the whole like going into the computer, trying to figure out, find like, what is this? How do I do this? How can I do this? Where it makes sense for my mm -hmm. business. And it just kind of just snowballed from that. Kind of took a little time off. 2017, um, something happened here. I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. So um, I had got, I got sick and um thyroid issues let me tell you right now ladies please and gentlemen go make sure you get that checked because <laughs> i had i had a major problem with that but around two sets after that happened my friend here introduced me to a lady here who had a gift shop mm -hmm. 
Hmm. And she was, cause I was making wrapping paper at the time. I still had, I think I had these guys right here. Okay. The little puffs and then the dancers, but that's about it. And the rest of this is actually in the last three years. Wow. So, um, I found her and literally two weeks after I found her, she had a gift shop. It was maybe open two, three times a week, a few hours here and there. She actually won a store in the local mall here. Mm. And I was in her store maybe two weeks and she's like, hey, anybody who wants to come over with me, because she had like a little store, different vendors, come and come into this gift shop and with me in this mall. It was like four months. Mm. The mall was building it out. It was something special. Um, and they loved her and it's still there. So this is three years later. And so that's really how it really all the rest of the stuff that happened because I had some stuff in the store and then I kept getting requests from different parents for different designs, like the gymnasts or mermaids or whatever. And then I just kind of just went back and started drawing all these different characters. And it just kind of just went from two, three characters. Now I have like 20 in all different things from fantasy to sports to careers. So yeah, so that's kind of just, just kind of what happened. And now I'm getting more into social media, of course, with the pan pandemic, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff um doing more like that type of stuff to get really get the brand out there so that's so that's long anyway. <laughs> okay so no i mean first and foremost that's a very interesting story because to even go back to what you said like you know around 2003 or what have you during that time okay your niece wants a tutu and then you know there's nothing wrong with being like the extra auntie or what have you, but you want to put a shirt with that. You know, you just don't want to get her a tutu. Like, yeah, yeah, you know what? Here's a tutu. Well, no, you have to have, I mean. The whole the whole outfit. Yeah, you know, it's about being fashionable now, okay? But we're going to talk about this, but to even have the idea of representation back then, as you said, who else was really selling things, you know, with, you know, black girls on them you know hispanic girls what have you asian what have you like yeah and this is 2012 i think yeah oh i'm sorry 2012 yeah it was 2012 so, so this is even less than 10 years ago right so, so yeah. we're not even talking 10 years ago so like man that is very key even for you to have the idea you know what i'm going to create my own from creating your own that just you know man snowballed to something bigger you know and as you said, being a self-taught artist, you know, I mean, being like self-taught pretty much in anything, there's going to be somewhat of a confidence issue. But when you have that aha moment, you know, people are like, oh, OK, yeah, you know what? You all really like this? Oh, OK. Is this what's up? Oh, I have more, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> yeah, that's let me give you saying. more of what I have, you know? And I mean, I think that's fabulous. And as I said, we're going to talk about representation you know in a few minutes you know um in the interview but i find that story very interesting and man look as you said the last couple of years you know you started off with how many designs again two three i had like two designs well i had all the girls i decided to do different i do different skin tones mm -hmm. and oh, the reason okay. i do that is because my family is very diverse when it comes to that Okay. So I decided to really just, you know, celebrate each of my nieces and nephews because actually my, my character is actually named for my nieces and nephews. So, Jeez. yeah, so each skin tone is named for a different uh, niece or nephew. So, uh, so it was very important for me to really do that because I have little dark skin nieces, I have little light skin nieces, and to me, every skin tone needs to be uh, celebrated. Man. So there it is there it is and that's part of the representation because people want to see them mm -hmm. themselves and other things you know to give it that more you know authentic and natural feel so i get it i get it i get it so let's talk a little bit about your fall and winter line like i mean i know you do home decor and you also do an apparel line what are some of the things that you have coming out um well for um for 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 fall, um, I know I've been getting a lot of requests for long sleeve shirts, so that's something that I actually do um, for kids. Um, and of course, this little dress right here, 
This was actually a summer dress, but it's actually one of those that can kind of go both ways. So I do have people still getting it because it's thick enough to wear during the winter. Okay. Um, Come on. Let's see. Um, as far as that goes, uh, for that, like I, I usually just have very like bomber jackets and different things like that for kids. Um, I try to keep it. I do have some adult stuff, but Coco Cutie, I specifically make it for children like like when i draw for children when i look for different products mm -hmm. i have zero to 12 in mind and that's as far as i want to go because I, I know that people are like well, why don't you do stuff for adults and i'm like uh well i'll work on that that'll be a whole different line this is right. for the kid right, <laughs> right. So, so. y'all get y'all on y'all gonna be all right and I mean, to me, it's important because I, sometimes I do see that, like, you know, a brand may start as a kid brand, but then, like, they cater to adults because, again, it's a little bit easier to sell to adults mm -hmm. because I do have a learning curve. Uh, not a learning curve. I do have a curve because I have to appeal to the parent and the child. That's true. Because the child's not going to buy it, you know. <laughs> they might you, like you it. You be a parent. parent the money. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. yeah so but I, and i know that i know that i know if i had an adult line you know i'd probably be like been gone whatever but it's like it's very important to me that the kid line is this is um how can i say it it was one of those things where every time i put it off everything i tried to do outside of this mm. i had issues with okay and then as soon as I said, okay, this is what I'm going to be doing, it's like everything fell into place. Mm, well. So, so yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> so I'm a big believer in that. Things happen for a reason. So, yeah. So every time I try to pull away from Coco Cutie, it's like everything, nothing worked. And mm. then, like, it was like, okay, all right, then, God. All right, I got you. I'm going to be, this is what I'm going to be concentrating on. And it's just seemed like everything keeps falling into place. So, so mm -hmm. yeah, so this is this is my purpose <laughs> right well, now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, that's just what it is. That's the purpose. <laughs> all right, all right, man. Skip it. All right. But now we talked about this before, but let's talk about melanin representation. Okay. Okay. So like, man, as I said before, you know, you seeing themselves in things man whether it be books whether it be clothes whether it be tv shows or what have you but in your mind why is it important for them to see themselves in fashion and how does your line you know take representation like to the next level okay so um I, I really do think it's important. Like, I, I, I you know, like to me, I, I always say words are power. Words have power. Visuals are powerful yeah. because it's very easy for you to talk. But to, for me, especially as children, even as people, we are visual people. I mean, if you think about how uh, what are what are black in the black community? What's who are the people people look up to? They look up to basketball players, football players. Why? Because they see this person in that role. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, okay, well that person can do it. I can do it. But if you never see the doctor, if you never see the gymnast, if you never see the whoever, you know, you're interested in, in that role, how do you, you're not going to see it. You're not going to associate yourself with that. So in your mind, you can't do it. Or mm -hmm. as a child, to me, it's subconscious. It's like you you don't see yourself in there because you never saw anybody there. So it's good when people are in, people are doing different things um, that are not considered the norm in our community because it allows our kids to see, okay, if that person can do it, I can do it. If that person can be an astronaut, I can be an astronaut. If that person can be this, I can be this, you know. Um, and not saying, you, you know, if you want to be the basketball player, that's great. But I mean, to see outside of just what we put ourselves into a box, like our kids need to be able to see that. And um, that's why, you know, I show the different characters I have. Like I have a president, I have an astronaut, I have a doctor. And, you know, I'll be adding more as I go along. I have the chemist. That way you can see yourselves in those roles. Mm. And I I have always been, my mom is actually a preschool teacher. And actually, my husband is actually used to be an elementary teacher. He teaches middle school now. Okay. But I think it starts when they're little, which is where my brand comes in. 
because mm-hmm. I want to reach the little ones because it's the little ones. If they see it in the beginning, by the time they get old enough, it's mm-hmm. already ingrained to That's say, true. okay, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. Um, and the reason I also do the imagination part with the unicorns and the mermaids and that kind of stuff, because that's important for our kids to know too. That's true. Because, you know, it's, it's good to see uh, a little kid as a mermaid, whatever. Now, I grant you, you know, you're not going to become a mermaid, but <laughs> <laughs> even though even though I do have a follower and that is her profession, she's a black mermaid. Like, she's a professional black mermaid. I was like, okay, hey, cool. <laughs> so, so, but but it gives them the, and to me as imagination, that's something you got to have as a kid too. It's good to learn all the good, the, the you know the the book stuff and stuff like that, but you got to imagine as well, yeah, sure. because that's what creates our sci-fi, our people who are doing directors, artists, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. It comes from imagination, mm-hmm. so it, that's why it's really important that melanin in all forms is represented not just in careers not just in what they do but also you know what they dream to be princesses unicorns mermaids fairies we want to call it yeah Yeah. well no i mean you hit on a look you hit on a great point because uh i've had people on the show who have been authors i just had a person on the show not too long ago you know who's a black sci-fi and fantasy author and the same thing i was asking them was you know like i remember growing up and watching certain shows and you know even certain movies like i love star wars okay i was a big star wars fan i didn't see the only black person in star wars was billy d wood okay all right so in my mind i'm like okay i gotta grow up to be billy d williams without the Colt 45 and all the other good stuff you know what i'm saying but Okay, man, he's in a movie, you know, he plays his role. He actually survives, you know what I'm saying? He makes it into other movies as well. So, you know, those are things that, you know, you take with you as you go on in life, you know, what have you. Even like in watching cartoons, like, man, in the early, I don't want to date myself like that, but in the early, well, in the 70s, no, it wasn't none of that. But like in the early 80s and mid 80s, 90s, there were man, there were maybe like one or two characters that, you can identify with who were black, you know, or a person of color. So, man, to have these things now, and as you said before, to even dream, to even dream of being, you know, hey, you know what? I want to be a black unicorn. Okay, cool. You can be that. I want to be a black mermaid. Cool. You can be that. I want to be a wizard. You can be a black wizard. Great. You know what I'm saying? Like, these things matter. These things matter because you have to have the vision, you know what I'm saying? And you have to dream in it in order to like, you know, put everything else into perspective and, you know, get the ball rolling. So, hey, look, I feel that. I feel that. Okay. All right. Now, I want to, you know, slide to the business side of things. Okay. Okay. Because, you know, in my mind, and I don't know about yours, but in my mind, Uh, I talk to a lot of people and a lot of people have misconceptions, you know, or their own ideas or certain things that they really don't understand when it comes to maintaining a black owned business, starting a black owned business. So as a so as a black woman who has their own brand, what are some things that people really don't understand about maintaining or starting your own business? Um, well, uh, I guess mine's from two sides. As I said, since I do my own images, a lot of people do buy their own, but, um, since I do my own, a lot of times, um, because I draw and design and, and everything else, I said, I'm a one woman show right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I know I've had people come up to me and they're like, Hey, well, how do I do what you do? Or, uh, or what do you do? Cause I do do graphic design on the side. But it's kind of like, you know, you give them a price and it's like, oh, well, wait a minute. I didn't think it cost. I was like, yeah, that's a lot of time. <laughs> like, this is, like, it's not as simple as, boom, slap something on the bag and say, here you go. Like, no. Right. <laughs> right. Um, you know, so, you know, some of these designs could take weeks for me to, to do, to actually put together. The drawing part is the easy part. Mm-hmm. Um but it's it's that part or uh the fact that you have to find the right people the right partners 
Mm. Um, because I don't, I don't sew, like I'm the artist behind the designer. I don't do all the sewing and stuff, but I vetted the people I have to make sure that it's a product that I want, that a product that I would buy. Um, you know, cause I'm very particular about that. That's where the extra auntie come in. Like I'm very, I'm very particular about that. So, you know, if I wouldn't do it for my, if I wouldn't buy it for my nieces, I'm not going to sell it to your child. So, um, so yes, yeah, so I'm very, very particular about that. So I only work with a few partners, you know, like, you know, work with them as far as like, you know, making sure the chipping times are right, making sure the product is of the quality I want it to be of. Um, even making sure, you know, like print it correctly, making sure it, it is, you know, it's going to last for a while. It's, you know, it, all that other quality stuff that comes in there. Like I, I have to get it in hand and I'm, you know, like, you know, sometimes I have my, I have a brand ambassador program. Sometimes I have them try stuff out like mm-hmm. here, I'm testing this right here. So I will go, you know, to different moms and different stuff and the kids and be like, okay, test this out. Tell me how it is. How do you like it? Is it something that you would purchase? So, you know, I use them as a sounding board as well as being also being my brand ambassadors. So, um, because again, you know, because I'm an auntie and not the mom, there's some stuff I will admit. I, you know, as an auntie, I'm I'm not going to think of that a mom will. So, I know my limitations. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> So, so yeah so um then there's also from the customer service side mm. um to me especially for my business um and i guess that came from because i as when i was younger i did work in hospitality and i do believe that everybody needs to work in some kind of retail hospitality job mm-hmm. of some sort <laughs> to with mm-hmm. the public of some sort to understand where you know where they're coming from because you know it's very important that um you know when i'm talking to my customers if it's something that is going that i'm transparent with my customers if there's a problem or or, you know or something like that i i am very transparent i'm like look this is not what i you know because i had an issue with that not too long ago um where unfortunately she well not unfortunately she does not live in the u.s she is she's part of the u.s but doesn't live she's like on the island Right. So, well, that was my first order to an island. Um, mm-hmm. I did not realize the shipping was going to take an obscene amount of time to get down there. Yeah. And it was my bad because that's something that I should have, you know, realized, hey, this is this is a whole different situation mm-hmm. because, you know, now we're in COVID, you got the shipping thing, uh, yeah. all this kind of stuff, customs that I use. I use um, overseas and domestic uh, manufacturers. They're ones I've vetted for the last, I don't know, five five years or so since I started a business. So I use both. So, but I had to, that's something that I messed up on. And so, you know, so I have to go back and write in my policy because I have all kinds of policies, my return policy, all that kind of stuff. Mm. So when it looks like something will take a little long, I'll reach out to the customer and be like, hey, this is what's happening right here. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so I'm very particular. That's why I said, I, I want to make sure it's right. Even when I personalize stuff, like, you know, I send stuff to the customer. Hey, this is what it's going to look like. So, so, you know what it's going to look like. This is how long it's going to take. Right. Um, that kind of stuff. So it's very important for me to do that for my brand, not just to be just a brand and me giving you stuff, but I want to keep you in the loop mm-hmm. um, of what I'm doing. So uh, customer service to me is number one. Um and you see a transparency with customers, um, especially when you talk about kids stuff. So your transparency and things like that uh, with the kids, um, with the brand ambassador program, and even with customers, like even even like putting stuff and posting it to Instagram. I am very particular about that because everybody child, everybody does not want their child on Instagram. So <laughs> some true. customers send me That's different. I'm like, hey, can I post? Um, you know, like I ask permission first, even though they might send me a picture, I'm like, okay, I ask permission first, that kind of stuff, because I know I have a children's brand. There is a certain way I have to do stuff. Um, insurance wise, you know, I have to have that. Um, actually, I just got the business. I actually have all my trademarks. So I got those this year. Yeah. So I decided to get the brand because the name and everything is trademarked. So I am. <laughs> so- Go on. Yes. Yes. Well, I mean, but to your point, that's important because, man, those are things that people really don't take into consideration. And 
I mean, even talking to music artists a lot, that happens a lot in the music industry where you may come out with a name and you sort of build your brand off that name, but you never trademark the name. But then someone yes. who's on a higher platform could come along, take that name, you know, even the same way you spelled it or what have you and make it their own if it's not trademarked. So, yeah. No, and that was a process. That was a two year process. Wow. A two years? Two, two and a half. Yeah. Because what happened was I had a company that wanted to, that was really close. So I had to have a lawyer come and I mean, she fought this company for like a year, year and a half um, before even COVID happened to get this, to, to, to make sure I had all my trademarks. Because right now um, I am actually on the brand registry of Amazon and to be on their brand registry, you have to own the trademark. Mm. and they were selling on Amazon with the name that was really close to mine and so when I had got my trademark you know she was like hey if you ever decide you want to sell on Amazon you need to have this trademark so it was like you know so this there's some stuff that I do myself and there's some stuff I just immediately pass on trademarking I just found a lawyer I said look I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> so <laughs> well I mean I think well you know what I mean <laughs> that's investing in your company yeah so certain investing things that you know mm -hmm. and eventually i'll start outsourcing other stuff but that was definitely something that i said okay i don't know how to do this and i'm not trying to learn how to do this <laughs> because this is not my this is not my this is nowhere near my realm like <laughs> okay right like i'm gonna stay in my lane y'all gonna stay over there and y'all i'm gonna hire so, people yeah. to do what they need to do okay well no i mean that's totally understandable totally totally understandable I, I, yeah so that marketing you know like you know as far as marketing goes i do some myself i do have you know hire other people sometimes so it just depends on what the marketing um part i do both um i work with influencers i work with brand ambassadors um uh, there's a cost you know to these things um and that's okay because my thing is just right here in order to get it out i know what i can do i know what i you know so you know hey i find different people who support my brand um that kind of thing so you know so it is it's it's good for me and then plus with the kids um uh with the children I, I i'm good with the kids the kids um because i'm here in charlotte i mm -hmm. told you i'm in that gift shop uh, one of the great things about being in there is that I'm able to go there even before COVID happened and be able to see the kids' reactions to the product. Hmm. So, um, or like when I'm out, sometimes I'll go to different shows and been at different shows around here. Um, I can see the kids' reactions to the product. And so, you know, because I remember, oh gosh, I had something. What was it? I think it was one of my little, that little ballerina up there okay okay so she actually's in a backpack and i had her in the store and i was in the store and nobody knew i was the owner of the brand like i just happened to be in the store at the time and uh i think i was restocking or something i can't remember why i was there but i was i was in the store and so this little girl comes in she's probably about seven eight hmm. and she immediately runs over to that bag and so and she's like, yeah, I'm going to get it today. I'm going to get it today. Apparently, her and her mom come in the store a lot. So every time she comes in, she wants this particular bag. And her mom keeps telling her, no, 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 you know, until she's whatever. So this time, her mom is buying it. So you can see the excitement on her face as she's getting this bag. And I'm like, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what, and a lot of that happens because I deal with, because I would say, I, I, I deal with color. And the funny thing is, is that as a kid, <laughs> Not even as a kid, when I first got into art, like I was not a color person, but mm -hmm. doing this brand has made me really like come out. I just put my inner kid on when I draw these images. Come on. So, so yeah, so like with her, um, and I've had several kids do that. Like I'll be in the store and they'll be like, come in and they'll come in or they'll stop and then we'll just go back to it and, you know, start picking through stuff. Mm -hmm. um, like over the summer when I vended, it was so funny. I, um, did a few shows the first show i first or second show i did it was these two little girls they were about six and seven and they come over to my table they didn't buy anything just kind of looked around you know kind of was like you know like interested and then i did a show a couple of weeks ago 
Same two girls. Mm -hmm. Come from somewhere. I, this is a whole different show. They literally come to the table, hand me their money, because apparently they didn't save their money to buy their little purses. There you go. So yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm good with the kids. <laughs> there you go. But, but, okay. So as we talked about before, representation matters, you know? Yeah, and the kids, the kids love the brand. It's, it's like, you know, because I said, my husband's a middle school teacher, and I think he took something of mine. Oh, gosh, I think he had some buttons or something he was giving. Because sometimes he'll go give the kids buttons because I sell, like, little pins and stuff. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, a couple kids do your brand. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, and that's got to make you uh, feel good. So, yeah, it makes me feel good, especially with the kids. When they're right. liking the brand, that tells me I'm doing something right. That's right. Come so. on. Come on. And, you know, as you say, that stays with you, you know, as mm -hmm. you, you know, go further on, you know, in life or what have you. Because let's just say, man, in another 10 years, you still have this brand, you know, and the kids are older. I don't want to say they have kids or whatever, but they may have little cousins or nieces or nephews or what have you. Hey, you know what, man, I bought this when I was a kid, you know, when I was coming up, you know, they had, you know, Coco Cuties, this, that, what have you. My teacher even bought some of these to school. I think you should have this. And they purchased that for their niece, nephew or brother, sister you know mm -hmm. god forbid child you know but i mean like if you're 12 and 22 okay yeah you know that's how totally different yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i'm that. getting more into i'm getting more people purchasing it for babies now so i'm i'm, I'm gonna start adding some more babies stuff. man start adding <laughs> man more baby stuff more baby stuff that look that is wonderful that is wonderful and really that sort of segues into my next question and that's pretty much about legacy you know, now, as you said, you are like the aunt, you know what I'm saying? You know, you are the extra aunt, but at the same time, you're also a businesswoman. You know, you're like a brand owner. So people like see you out here. They see your brand. They know it's you. You know, your nieces know this is you. And man, like a lot of people talk about leaving like a legacy behind. A lot of times, you know, people probably feel, well, man, I started this. I can leave this, you know, to like my next of kin or, you know, siblings or, you know, what have you, you know. But I also talk about, you know, having like kids, you know, coming up, maintaining that mindset to receive things handed down to them. Um, basically, how can, you know, in your opinion, how can you like assure, you know, yourself that, you know, these types of talks with like your man, I'm just going to go with nieces, you know, like how can you like assure yourself that, you know, the talks that you have with your nieces, you know, about being kid or just being any type of entrepreneur stays with them, you know, not necessarily to like take over your brand per se, but to develop their own brand and, you know, start their own company. Um, you know, I'm kind of, uh, this is kind of a hard question for me. And the only reason is because I actually come from a line of entrepreneurs. So, okay. so it's, it's, it's like my parents, uh, are, were a barber and, and had a beauty salon for okay. forever. Like they were always their own business person. My mom, her daycare, she's preschool teacher but she owned a daycare for years before i was even thought of right. so it's like it's like i've always seen it like with my especially with my mom and her siblings and stuff i've mm -hmm. always seen it so again that's where it comes in you, you see something it's just ingrained in you and like even my nieces now my sister has a cake business my nieces actually started up a little business for themselves there um is. so it's like so they are how can I say it? They are entrepreneurs. They, they, and it's just, I wouldn't say it's something we've actually really had a discussion with. It's more like, okay, they see auntie doing it. They see mama doing it. They see grandma did it. And so it's kind of like, okay, well, <laughs> let oh, me boy. do my thing. Right. And it's not holding them back. It's like, all they, you know, it's like them talking about it and saying, hey, I want to do this. I think it's all about um, encouraging them mm -hmm. like you know don't hold them back when they want to do something don't say okay you can't you should always say you can or how can i help you how can i support you mm -hmm. kind of thing 
Mm-hmm. So like when my nieces decided to do this business, you know, it was mm-hmm. like it wasn't my sister saying, okay, well, you can't. No, it was more like, okay, so what what do we what do we need to do mm-hmm. to get you started? And I think it's very important that your village, your <laughs> is oh. is there to support the kids um when they want to do stuff like this. Mm-hmm. Like don't uh, don't hinder them because, you know, like Kids can do so much if you just give them a chance to do it. Mm. So I agree. <laughs> that's that's kind of where I'm like, you know, like just be the support, the sounding board. So when they get older, when they want to do something or like Coco Kitty, I started seeing, you know, it's like, OK, all right, well, let's kind of pull you in the fold. This is something mm-hmm. you want to do. Um, not trying to force you into it because my parents never forced us to be a barber or a beautician or right. daycare. But it was never like... Um, well, you can't do it. Mm. So okay. Okay. I think that's very important to have a good people around you. I totally agree. I, I, I mean, I'm not going to disagree with that because, um, you know, as a person who does work with youth and young adults, you know, I've worked in middle schools. I've worked in, man, in high schools, non-public high schools or what have you. And, you know, that's one of the one things I always try to tell kids now, you know, I'm like, well, man, I'm not saying that you don't have to go to college now, but the way the men, the way things are set up now, you know, you can come right out the gate, you know, being your man, opening up, running your own business, running your own business, it, man, is more upfront now than it has ever been, especially, you know, for, you know, especially for the African-American community. Because yeah. as you said, you know, you coming up, man, barbers, you know, uh, school teachers, what have you, you know. So you sort of went into like this one lane, but now we have people all over the place, you know, people opening up wine um, companies, people opening up, you know, um, homeowner, you know, um, buyers or what have you, you know associations or what have you man like i mean it's all across the board so to have a village around you that inspires you know man owning your own being an entrepreneur i think that is very key you know and i was just speaking from the aspect of um i have this concept of you know kids well i have this thing where i say well man you may have grown up on a farm right and all your life, man, you know, you've seen your dad tend to the farm. You've seen your mom tend to the farm. You know a little bit about farming yourself, but you go off to school and, you know, all of a sudden, you know, the farm is not as important to you anymore because you have all these other things that come into play. But later on, you know, when it's time, well, you know, like dad's getting up in age, mom's getting up in age, what's going to happen to this farm? You know, so are you a going to come back and take care of the family business or are you going to move on and, you know, do your own thing? And it's not to say forget about the farm, but I only did that, you know, because that's just what we were doing at the time, you know, to survive, to eat, to do this, to, to you know, to do that, what have you. So that's the purpose of that question. So you answer. Oh, the well, purpose. I mean, in that, I mean, I guess in that sense, I, I... I don't think necessarily be obligated, but I think you have to. Um, I think that's also something too. As you get older, I think that it, that is a conversation. I think you do have to have with your, you know, your family. You know, how do you want to preserve this? Because we do have, like, you know, my my grandfather was a farmer. We still have land. My my, you know, my parents still own it. Te- the family is still in the family. Mm-hmm. But you know, every now and then we'll get it together and be like, okay, what do we want to do? Mm. So, you know, but it, you, we don't want to get rid of it, but we're trying to figure out how to actually make it work for us. So um, I think that's very important to have. I think it's good to have uh, that good relationship with your family to be able to do something mm. like that. Mm-hmm. Um, like right now, my aunt's over it, that kind of stuff. But it's, I don't know, my, my, my mom's side of family, it's, it's very community on that side. So it's, it's like, you know, it's like, okay, well, what do we want to do? We want to do this. It is, you know, right. we, we actually have open communication. So, you know, so I think that's important to have, you know, especially in your family, in the black community to say, OK, we have open communication about what we want to do. Because some people might want to do that. Some people might not. Like my sister, 
you know, she wants to do certain things like that where I might not want to, <laughs> but it's something that we have discussed, you know, right. and it's not like saying, okay, well, because you want to take it over and all this kind of stuff. No, it's just, it's a, you gotta be, you gotta be open with each other. <laughs> I well, I mean, but you said the key word, <laughs> communication, you know, like you have to have that communication with each other because, you know, that's how things get done. When you don't have the communication, then, you know, someone makes a decision and, you know, that they feel is best, you know, for everyone, you know, then, you know, people have their own like attitudes or what have you about it. And, you know, some people yeah, don't agree yeah, with that it. Happens. So. But I, I, that's why I said communication, I guess what I am most as a whole, if you think about it as a whole and not parts mm -hmm. and that's when you're going to actually something going to when you actually come together as a community, right? We have to do more of that. I agree. I agree. <laughs> come together I agree. as a as a community to uh, to make the change, or you know how they say, be the change. You want to mm -hmm. see that kind of you know. So you have to come together, um, and you know it's it's not about well, what does she do? What does she do? It's kind of like even my business right here. I, I remember it was a couple. What was it last year? It was, it's another, it's a children's brand and they're black children's brand. They're a little bit different. They're, they're different from mine, but it's still, you know, black characters. Mm -hmm. um, but I said, she's a different brand, but it was like, you know, and my brand ambassador was like, hey, uh, well, I saw this brand and, you know, it's not your, I said, you know what? The whole point is for kids to have choices. There it is. It's, they're not my competition. They're to have choices. Because, I mean, you got Barbie, you got Bratz, you got Disney, you got you have all these brands mm, with yeah, all man. these white you children. Yeah. And they are not, <laughs> it, it's, it's, you know, kids have all of them, just the same as they might have my stuff, her stuff, her stuff. It's the whole point of being able to have a choice. And we just never had a choice. And now it's like, we have choice. Give the kids the choices. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, you know, hey, you might buy my shirt and her doll. I, you know, it's all good. You know, well, <laughs> the whole yeah, I mean, have the representation there to say, hey, we want it, we need it. Yeah. You know, it can't be just one person. It has got to be, you know, <laughs> no, a I, collective. So <laughs> I agree. I, I but you said it best: representation. So how yeah. you want to see yourself represent? That's. No problem at all. No problem at all. I mean, even the big companies are starting to see that. Like, hey, yo, <laughs> like, wait a minute, we might want to get in. <laughs> yeah. That's a whole nother story for a whole nother day. Yeah, that's a whole nother ball game, but <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, yeah, 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 that's a whole nother. Yeah, that's, that's a whole, whole nother. Game, but it's you know, but that's what I'm saying. But obviously, it, it's needed. So <laughs> I agree. I. I man. Everything that you have said, I agree with because I feel that the more options they have, you know, the better, you know, it's going to be. And we just never know where, you know, those ideas may go, you know, further down the line or what yeah. happens. You know, it just may lead to something much bigger, you know, that, will, you know, that's pretty much beneficial for everyone, you know. So there you go. All right. So now let me ask, you know, if people want to, you know, Man, follow you on social media. If they want to purchase products, you know, what's the website? What are your social media links? Okay. So uh, the website is cococutie.com. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's another thing, too. I own all the domains. So if you're going to be a business, you're going to have to sit there and make <laughs> like, oh, I own .com, .net, all the ways to spell it. Okay. So cococutie.com, C O C O A. C U T I E dot com. But it's okay if you get a lust because it'll take you to the website too. I said I own them all. Um, so <laughs> hey, hey, look. <laughs> um uh and um and right now I actually have pajamas that I actually am coming out by Christmas. They're pre-order, so if you want them, they are on the website available first run. So okay. um, yeah, they are beautiful. I'm trying to see that kind of blanket. This is actually uh, okay. All right, y'all. Look, so she's so showing y'all yeah, what it is now. All kind of bundles and stuff I'm doing on there. Okay. Um, 
And then on Instagram and Facebook, it's at Coco Cuties. So C O C O A C U T I E S. You will see a bunch of beautiful black and brown children on the site. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I always like putting pictures of all my customers and brand ambassadors and all that kind of good stuff. So they're on Facebook. It's on Facebook and Instagram. Um, I'm actually going to be doing a TikTok and a YouTube channel soon, and it'll be basically under the same uh, name um and pinterest so i'm a little bit everywhere if you're on linkedin i'm over there too so (laughs) go go cuties is everywhere y'all so man all social media platforms go to them type it in it will come Uh, yeah or just go to the website you know or just go to the website the website take you everywhere else um Mm -hmm. again i have an amazon store i'm on etsy um there's a couple things there but the website has our all everything in there so um the yeah the backpacks bags all that good stuff it's on the website um and uh starting january i'll start taking requests because i do get that that's how i get some of the designs as well i have parents coming like hey i like this so in january i'll start drawing again Mm -hmm. Uh, and if you live in charlotte i'm doing the southern christmas show so that is a huge big show here so i'm doing that in november for 11 days (laughs) so (laughs) Oh, yes. All right. All my (laughs) Y'all heard, man. Look here. Y'all heard what you said now. All right, man. Come on. Go ahead and support. Support, support. Man, I'm all about that support. So now, Ms. Denise Buck. Okay. Come to the last question. This is the question that my show is known for, so I have to present it. Okay. All right. What is the one word that best describes you and why? Okay. So. I, you know, I had a whole show think about this. Um, I, I, and and I guess do I want to say persevere? Um, I guess I would say say person person persevere. I guess that would be a word that describes me. Um, and the reason is the reason is because I am just one of those people. It's kind of like when I have my mind set to something, am I doing the right? Yeah, I think that's the definition, right? So I have my mind set, <laughs> I have my mind set to do something, I am going to do it. Like I have my mind set. Uh, my husband gets on me all the time. Like, hey, I was like, yeah, I'm going to do this. This is what we're doing. So, <laughs> so um, it's all about you know persevering, um, doing what you need to do to get the job done, and that's the type of person I am. So that I guess it's my word to describe me. Just like this brand, it's about making sure our kids are represented. So, and and you know, to get doing the work to get it done. Okay. All right. Well. Y'all heard it, okay. <laughs> Perseverance, all right, man. Overcoming all that stuff to get the job done at the end of the day, that's what it is. As I said before, man, go out and support. CocoCuties.com or, yep. or okay, net, all that, all that good stuff. Coco Cuties, okay, man. Social media, website, go support. Miss Denise Butler, I thank you for being my guest on Word with Ty Brownlow. And man, ladies and gentlemen, this has been man, this has been word with Cy Brown Low. I have been your host, Cy Brown Low. Remember, no one is worthless, no story is worthless. You can follow me, all social media platforms at Word with Ty Brown Low, or you can just go to my website, tybrownlow.com. Definitely get in this conversation, plus other great conversations. Miss Denise Butler, I thank you for being my guest. We thank out you. Peace.